on the 6th of August 1945. We remember the atrocity which took place in Hiroshima when approximately 80,000 people were annihilated in an instant with the dropping of the first atomic bomb by the United States. Unfortunately, this was probably a test of whether atomic bombs worked because it was already very clear that World War II was coming to an end. And although the myth was perpetuated afterwards that had brought the war to an end, negotiations were already taking place and it was clear that Japanese surrender was already imminent. So to use an atomic weapon, a weapon of mass destruction, in this way was utterly horrific. We have never seen the use of an atomic or nuclear weapon since then. But as is very clear in today's world, the threat from nuclear weapons has not gone away. United States and Russia between them hold over 90% of the world's nuclear weapons. Both are signatories to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, under which they have pledged to disarm under Article 6 of that treaty. Unfortunately, both of those countries have only taken token steps towards disarmament and that both hold nearly 2,000 weapons on ready alert to be fired within minutes is utterly reprehensible in today's world. The Non-Proliferation Treaty Review Conference is taking place right now in August 2023 in Vienna and Ireland and some of our partner countries who were represented here at the commemoration ceremony in Marion Square today, Mexico, Brazil and South Africa among others, have issued a very strong statement towards taking forward nuclear disarmament to that conference, calling on nuclear armed states and setting out meaningful steps to disarm. Ireland, again, was to the fore in the negotiation of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which lays down the actual conditions for nuclear armed states to disarm. And we look forward to the day when not just Russia and the United States, but all nuclear armed states will sign up to uh, that treaty. The treaty, for the first time, recognises the impact of nuclear weapons on the environment and the disproportionate impact on radiation on women and children. And it is a really important stepping stone towards total nuclear disarmament. And while we will always want to remember the horrors of Hiroshima, we hope that the call to nuclear disarmament someday and someday soon will be redundant because nuclear weapons will have been put beyond use by those whose responsibility it is to do so. That's my home. There was a rich here. Now there isn't. That's my home. That's my yard. It's still here. Where a bridge stood, there's a river. No more bridge. Where there was once a pass, now there's a line. We live here, on the line, in the devil's belly. Yeah, the poem was written in 2014, uh, during the, the war, Russian and Ukraine. When I read the poem, I felt the same connection between the people who was in Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and people who are in Ukraine. So, yeah, it's so privileged to be here to split the world in front of people. I was so surprised, like, Ireland has this event and try to make people remembering 70 years ago, so. War is so terrible, but love is kind of strong. The people of our world have paid the ultimate cost through hunger, poverty, homelessness, unemployment, environmental degradation. While the big powers have endless funding for militarism, nuclear weapons, while budgets in all our countries have been slashed for the building of schools, hospitals, healthcare, housing, employment and for our planet. And every aspect of the nuclear cycle is damaging for our planet. Because from the moment they mine uranium, the raw material for the nuclear fuel cycle, right through to the deployment of nuclear weapons around the world, there is danger and damage to our environment. We need to call today on our politicians on this, the 78th anniversary of Hiroshima, to invoke the Hague Convention, declaring these actions at Chernobyl and now Zaporozhye as war crimes and to further demand and negotiate a no-war zone around 
all nuclear facilities now and in the future. It was a hugely significant event, a devastating event, and an event that it is extremely important never to forget. And that's why the ceremonies like this are so important, so that we don't repeat the mistakes. Unfortunately, there's every evidence that we are heading towards repeating those very same mistakes. War is raging in many parts of the world, and in the situation in relation to Ukraine, we have two nuclear-armed power blocks engaged in a proxy war. And the danger of that escalating and getting out of control is unthinkable. And unfortunately, there's a sense of just allowing it to happen. We say nothing, we go into denial, and we pretend that this is not happening. But days like today, and commemorating this event, should wake us up to the fact that the war in Ukraine in particular holds dangers beyond description. What we need is a ceasefire in negotiations. That's how this war is going to end and that should happen now. Why wait until tens of thousands of more people are killed, till Ukraine and the surrounding areas are further devastated and eventually there will be a ceasefire in negotiations. So that should start now. As a young person in a world that's kind of a little bit unravelling with destabilisation and with this threat of war and uncertain futures, it's quite scary to see that nuclear weapons could be used and they could provoke an awful crisis like the one in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And it's quite moving and important to commemorate events like this as we go forward and as we move as a society, hopefully, beyond nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons is obviously also connected with environmental injustices and environmental degradation. Irish neutrality has played a vital role in that it gives Ireland an independent standing which is not tied to doctrines of the engagement of violence as a means to solving disputes and as a means of international self-expression. Violence has no place in the international order. Irish neutrality has served us well and it is something that we can be proud of in many ways. We are people of peace, not of war. In the name of future generations, in the name of our beautiful earth, we cry out for peace, knowing that there is nothing more precious in life than life itself. We ask simply to stop the war, make peace, not war. The future is in our hands and let us be the ones to believe in the power of our voices and shout out together, we want peace, end war and disarm for life and give hope for the future. Thank you.